Hi you guys, welcome back to Amber and the Truth where we expose the truth, the gospel truth that is. And I have here a video of TikTok that I wanted to actually um, respond to. At the time I didn't know how to work TikTok, I still barely know how to work TikTok, but um, I still post. So follow me on there, Amber and the Truth on TikTok, but um, I'm responding to the TikToker Christy.Burke where she asks a bunch of questions about God and I assume... She's an atheist because she doesn't believe in what I'm in what us Christians believe. So I just want to, you know, answer her questions and tell her, you know. So let's start with the first one. If God is love and love is patient, why did God condemn humanity after only one mistake? That's a really good question. Well, if you know in John chapter one, verse one, it says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. So that has two meanings, meaning his scriptures are him. The Bible, the words in the Bible are him. And they're his reflection of what he wants us to do, instructions and laws and stuff like that. And then it also refers to God, what God tells you. His word is, meaning that's it, that you take heed to what he says. God is the creator of Adam and Eve. He's the creator of us. So, when God said to do something, to listen, it should have been done. There wasn't no, there were, they didn't know any evil, any evil until they ate of the tree. So, before then, they were simple-minded people. They didn't, they didn't know how to scheme and scheme and get over people. All they had to do was obey God. That was the only rule. Obey God, live in a garden in a peaceful, free life. They couldn't even do that. They ate of the tree. All they had to do was obey God don't eat of the tree and they did he condemned them because they didn't listen and he's a just god at that god is always just so he didn't smite them he didn't kill them he didn't start humanity all over he just departed from them not leaving them but they departed themselves from him by not listening to him and eating of the tree if god is love and love is kind why did god commit genocide well, the reason why he committed genocide is because we were all wicked at the time. You ever heard the saying, especially today, we are in the days of Noah? Think about the world we live in right now. Isn't it the safest world we've ever been in? Isn't it just no crime at all and life's just grand? Right, it's not. We all know the world that we live in. It's pretty evil, it's pretty horrible, and the majority of it is because of us. It's because of human beings. Genesis chapter 5, verse 5 through 6 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, continually. And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Can you imagine how evil we must have been for God to regret making humans? He regretted making us. He regretted making, like, what? That's, it should, it, honestly, it should make you sad. Because he's our creator. He regrets making us. That's wild. But that's the reason why. We we were sinners. We were horrible people. We, all we thought was murder and, and, and steal and kill and whatever the desires of our heart was. We was the furthest away from God as possible at that time just like we are now we are in the days of Noah if God is love and love does not envy why is God a jealous God well really good question another really great question well because it kind of sounds like a negative thing right it's actually jealousy is actual sin how is it a sin and God can be jealous? Well, here's how. Well, if you read any of the beginning books of the Bible, Genesis and Exodus, you will realize that false idolatry and false gods were a thing. They was just, it was rampant. It was almost like they praised literally anything that was a thing. They praised rocks and trees and animals and all type of beings and, 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 and inanimate objects as their God. God is a jealous God because he is our creator. He created us. Imagine your mother who spent umpteen hours in labor and all that pain just for you to grow up and be like, Miss Sally down the street, 
She's who I love. She's who I give my devotion to and my praise to. Even though my mother raised me, it's okay. I want to give it praise to her. That doesn't make any sense. Like, logically, that's not the person who cared for you, who looked out for you, who loved you, who created you. So it wouldn't make sense for you to give your love to another random person. It says in Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. He don't want you to worship nobody else because it doesn't make sense for you to worship anybody else because I created you. Like, it's like your child going on and loving somebody else while you sat there and raised them, gave them everything they needed, and there's no appreciation. They don't even acknowledge your existence. And that's oddly what most people do to God. If God is love and love is not self-seeking, why does God require worship? Well, it's not a requirement. Worship, Worshiping God is not a requirement. Clearly, because you're able to live your life as an atheist existence and doesn't even want to believe that he exists. We worship God because we love him. We give him praise because we know he's real and the things he's brought us through. Only a God could have done. Worship is not a requirement. It is, it is a fulfillment for him. It gives him praise because we don't deserve it. All the grace God has given us, we are horrible, wicked people. We absolutely deserve to be in hell. We absolutely do. And the fact that we're not, and he's saving us, he sent a savior to save us, only means he loves us so much. So why not pay that love back with worship? If God is love, and love keeps no records of wrongs, why does hell exist? Well, hell exists for the devil and his demons, and his demon friends, cousins, whatever you want to call them. Hell exists, exists strictly for him. But here's the kicker. Humans can go to hell. God does not send you to hell. You send yourself to hell. God created us, and through sin, from Adam and Eve, we are separated from him. means we have to find our way back. Honestly, not even find it. God is always there for us. He never left. So you just have to find your way back to him. And he'll save you, wash you up, turn you into a whole new person. And you walk with him on an everyday basis. But a lot of you don't want that. You don't want God's goodness. So the opposite of God's goodness is everything he is not. So darkness, torture, torment, the worst type of, I don't know, the things that you go through, life, depression, whatever it is, suicidal thoughts, whatever it is that's horrible to you in this world is going to exist in hell because that's not of God. And everything of God is good and great. A great feeling when you bite into your ice cream after a hot day, when you get into a pool when it's hot, when you see your friend you haven't seen in a long time. Those feelings are God because they feel good. He is everything good. Everything evil that you know is the devil. You have to, that's why we tell you to choose which side you're going to be on. Because honestly, heaven is where I want to be. See, a lot of people like to use this Bible verse, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, does not boast, at their weddings. And it's supposed to be this ultimate symbol of what true love really is. And yet the description of God's love looks nothing like that. And if you were to go out and show other people the love that God has shown humanity, you wouldn't be very liked. See, here's the thing. When you read the Bible and you become a Christian, you begin to walk with God, you begin to understand things a little bit better. The weddings that we have now are not a representation of God. So that's why their ending is so horrible. That's why marriage is so bad. Because marriage for men and women, through God's eyes, was the first cons uh, consummating the marriage was sex. Now that that's just rampant all over the world and it's just easy, accessible, we create our own version of what marriage is, which is why we go through so much when you do get married. God's not in the middle of it. And I'm sorry she thinks that God's a horrible person and that he damns humanity and that he's mean to his children. But God's also a just God. If you actually read the Bible, open the Bible, because the Bible was written by God. I know people like to say it was written by man. It was written by man under the Holy Spirit. So under God. God gave them every single thought and every word to put inside that book. It was not them writing based on their own memory. It was God. He just needed a hand, a.k.a. human hands, to write a book and preserve for his people to read so we can know in the future what to do, how to act, and what to say, and how to be. I hope one day that this lady finds the clarity that she wants. I hope God shows her 
who he is so she could begin to love him like the rest of us because he honestly is the best thing that ever that that exists because we need him I can't function without him I'm not ashamed to admit, admit that I need him to do everything in my life everything but I want to thank you guys for watching the video for more content Christian content go ahead and hit the like button for your girl subscribe and I'll see you or you'll see me next time bye